Maybe it's only me that has the shoe that high up on the rankings, but I really like my shoes. So ever since this RX-8 was announced a few months ago, I was pretty set on picking this shoe up from the get-go. The claims that these race ready gravel shoes was based on the Shimano XC9 cross country shoe that I've been using the last year and some change, but with a pretty substantial weight saving and that got me all tingling inside. So they claim they removed a bunch of unnecessary stuff, at least in my case for my kind of riding, riding on gravel, uh, bikepacking, adventuring and a lot of road riding in my case. Those changes actually got this shoe down to 629 grams and that is for a pair of size 45. That's what I have, right? Yeah. Comparing this to my old Shimano XC9 shoe, the previous model, not the current one, that comes in at 740 grams. And my old Giro VR90s, they come in at 703 grams. So I'm well happy with the weight of these shoes. And if you know me, I could just end the video there. Over 100 grams saved, done. But let's take a closer look just for the hell of it. So to actually drop those 100 grams, what did they actually do? Comparing this specifically to my XC9 shoes. First of all, they removed the toe spikes, which I'm very happy about. I haven't used mine on any kind of shoe and they are more of an annoyance for me. As you can see here, they're basically falling apart. So if you're a cyclocrosser or a cross country racer or something, you could probably skip these if those spikes are a must. The tread on the sole is also heavily reduced, no Michelin rubber anymore and there's plenty of exposed carbon to scratch up. Reading the press coverage when they were announced, I thought they would have had the same carbon sole as the XC9, but looking at them side by side, the shape of the sole looks a lot different even if taking the stripped down thread into account. It's also only a 10 on Shimano's stiffness scale. The XC9 shoe comes in at 11, maxed out. But with my Olympic sized leg, I couldn't tell the difference. Very strange. If we take a look at the upper part of the shoe, rather than the XC9, I think this actually has a lot more common with the lower tier XC5 shoe that was recently announced. Only one boa at the top and the Velcro for the toe box. It's also missing the big heel cup and the shark tooth like fabric for heel retention that you can find on the XC9. Instead, it has a tighter padding just above the heel to keep that heel in place, but I will get back to this point in a bit. The insole is exactly the same as the XC9 and it has that replaceable arc support and it comes with both the normal and the high arc support. Last but not least in this comparison, we have the price and for once, Getting the lighter product doesn't mean more money. The XC9 has a retail price of 400 bucks, while the RX8 comes in at a much more reasonable 250 bucks. So let's talk about the look. I think this will be pretty polarizing. Personally, I have grown so sick of black shoes. I realized the logic of having black shoes, especially off-road. Uh, things get dirty quick and you don't have to clean them that much. But for my taste, with a few exceptions, there's almost no black shoes that makes me want to go, Ooh, I want to put my feet in those. I actually would like to have a full on white shoe, but in the off-road segment, there's not really a lot to choose from, understandably. I guess the market is not really looking for white shoes there. Uh, but I really dig the new Rafa shoe, for example. That's lace though, which is not really what I'm looking for in an off-road adventure shoe. I need to have a very quick way to get in and out of the shoe when, when I step in and out of tents and stuff like that. So I actually prefer the laces for the actual customizable fit. But yeah, for the adventure part of my riding, I really think Boas or Velcro or something is... Uh, bit better solution. Physique also has a pretty nice white shoe. Uh, my feet didn't really like the Physique fit that much though. So I was very happy when they announced this and they had this colorway 
not only that black boring one but i will admit this shoe actually looks better in photos and uh, all the marketing stuff well it's a lot more grayish silver uh, than on those pictures in my opinion uh, luckily when you're outside in the sunlight since they're almost reflective maybe they are reflective actually uh, they look a lot brighter and nicer in my opinion. They look much better on my feet than in my hand. It's pretty polarizing having a silver shoe. I'm no stranger to silver shoes though. I actually picked up the first yellow and silver uh, Giro Empire shoe back in 2012 or 13, whenever that was released. So I'm definitely not afraid of a bit of flair. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? Too extravagant or so I have done a few rides on these already a couple of shorter gravel ones some longer rides out in the mountains and yes yesterday I was out on 180k 3000 meters of climbing that was the big test for these I guess and fit wise they are pretty much the standard Shimano fit the toe box is a bit wider than say Giro or uh, CD for example and as I mentioned before the heel has a bit of a different fit than the XC9. So instead of that fabric that keeps your heel in place, these are actually a lot more padded just above your heel bone. Is that a bone there? Whatever. So the first 50k of this ride yesterday, I started to feel that it was almost too tight. So I started messing around with the boas and that brings me to another problem with a single boa. So the first part that would tighten around my foot was this part that goes just above your wrist. Uh, so this tightens much more on my shaped feet than the lower part. So to manage to get this correct, I had to do a couple adjustments during the ride, uh, which I think it's one of the good parts when you have laces. You just you get the perfect fit all the time i never really needed to adjust my fit with laces but with boas i always fiddle around with the shoes but anyway that's that's a different story so what i did in the end when i figure out the the perfect tension that wouldn't cause my heel to hurt either is before i tighten down the boa i put one finger between my foot and the upper and then tighten the boa down until i felt the front part was tight enough so I removed my finger and did the fine tuning for the upper part and that way I felt a lot more comfortable for the last part of the ride and I didn't really experience any more trouble in the heel area. But there's always a bit of a fiddling going on when the shoes are new. They will break in with some more riding I think. Other than that fit wise they are pretty much standard Shimano so I like that for sure. Also uh, like I said did a couple of gravel rides, did some walking around and that kind of reveals one issue of removing a lot of tread on the bottom and this is basically from just one little walk over some gravel and stuff so i think this sole will look pretty beaten up pretty quick but it's all about the weight saving anyway <laughs> well that's it i'm pretty stoked and i still have my xc9s uh, if i really want to match my bike better but i like to have some options so what do you think let me know in the comments and feel free to leave a like if you found this interesting or helpful, always appreciated and subscribe for more stuff like this and other bike shenanigans. If you do, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.